timetable. I'm very comfortable with the recreation department and the subcommittee is prepared to have a hearing within, I uh, take it 45 days, is that reasonable? Mm -hmm. so, you know, it that, it wouldn't be any more than that. We'll set our date. We should have a date. To the petitioners, uh, clearly, uh, how do we get the, uh, how do we advertise this date so that everybody, we don't have this communication problem that the we'll chair created. Once we post it from the town, we post, you know, we post it on our website, and then okay. we'll also pay the mark and we'll make sure it gets into the petition. So, so the petitioners, any concerns or issues associated with this upcoming hearing? And I think you've heard the position of the board at this point. Yes, sir. Could I just ask that it not be scheduled around the Memorial Day weekend? And, and that time period, because uh, some people are traveling. Actually, I was going to have it the day before. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> uh, absolutely. We, we, we would respect that request. Okay. So, I'd like to know if the, uh, have the board maybe talk to the police and the fire department, see what the safety concerns are with them. <clears throat> in order to date, they haven't been called about noise. They haven't been down there for accidents. They're probably down there less now since the dog park than it is. It was a soccer field or whatever. Something to weigh in. They have been called. They have been called. Yeah, they have. Yes, sir. If, if I could, uh, rather than take the time to answer your, your question, Scott, I'd rather table it for our, our um, public hearing. Public hearing. Okay. That's okay with you, sir. Rather than respond to that. We probably have some information we should provide, but I don't think it would be uh, of any value at this point. <laughs> And also, um, I just want to make sure for the record that uh, the board understands that, <clears throat> and I speak on behalf of all the park recreation committee members, we really do um, respect the petition process, and we have no problem with it. I, I really respect what the people did. I, I don't have any problem with it. Again, you made it clear and you understood that we don't feel the process was followed here internally in our, in our own our town hall. And that's the only issue we had. So I just want to make sure that the residents understand we, we have no problem with you making the petition and submitting the petition. It was after that fact, the process that it took after that. And it had no, no um, regard to what you did. Okay, with that, uh, we're going to close the discussion and we're going to move on to another business. Thank everybody for coming. Thank you. Thank Quickly in response to the uh, legal budget, I mean, you had a chance uh, to just go through and calculate out what I expect our expenses to be through the end of June. And um, if we can see if we those last three months continue at the nine month run rate, I would anticipate that we'll have uh, enough money to, to pay. Um, there is one fairly uh, labor intensive issue which involves the ongoing uh, police contract negotiations. But uh, certainly the run rate, maybe even uh, slightly above the run rate, we have Greg, is every call last year? Yeah.
uh, for the ABCC. Does it require a motion? Or just no, it does not require a motion because it's previously been approved and signed by the board by a motion. However, in this case, the license pledge, which was put forth by the uh, uh, proponent, has been removed. And there's a letter from the, uh, the attorney for the licensee stating that fact. And you also have a copy of the uh, various histories of Form 43 is being filed. The last one on March 1st of this year. Um, so it does not require a vote of the board, but I do ask that you endorse that this evening, and we will get it into the uh, to the ABCC for their
much brighter light. Doesn't sound like a good deal. Yes. Could we weigh in on that, um, Bob? This is something that we've been discussing a little bit. At, it's light pollution. <laughs> and um, we've been a little bit concerned about, um, well, especially with new projects coming in, we've talked about with um, all greens coming in. And, um, and we've been talking, too, about um, the shopping centers on Route 28. Um, there is there is a problem with light pollution. And so we're trying to keep, the while, while trying to keep safety issues in parking lots, uh, keeping them well lit, trying to keep any fallout from the, their uh, lighting standards, um, you know, trying to keep the lighting right on the lot and not having it um, uh, fall out into surrounding areas or even skyward. You know, I mean, I can look out from my backyard and see that the sky is a glow off in the distance, and that's not a good thing. So uh, what I'm concerned about is if you've got 50 watts in, in this other lighting standard, um, you know, does that equate to a lot more um, than 50 watts in the incandescent? And what does the new fixture look like? Is that going to um, cast light in a in a greater arc than it does now? I mean, you know, we kind of well, like to weigh think, in on that. I, you know, I think that the, uh, the fixtures themselves can be shielded to the point where they're putting the light down where it's needed and not up in the air. We would I, I guess I'm raising the issue because uh, you know you can go by, uh, and I'm not suggesting. Bulbs that use a third of the energy and provide the same level of brightness, and you don't have to change the fixtures. Right. So uh, I think it's worthwhile getting a uh, representative from running light to come before us, where we can ask some questions and talk about what our alternatives are. I have a quick question. Does, does Reading Light own the light units on the poles? They, they do, don't they? I believe so. Yes, they, so that we, we just rent they, them. If they Basically. upgrade them, if they change them from one style to another, they, they make that change at their expense. And the fact that a lower wattage uh, bulb or a lower wattage requirement comes out of it is our benefit. But I, but I, was, I don't, unless you tell me that they're asking oh, us to pay for them. The oh, annual cost is higher. That we pay, we don't get charged an electric bill. We get paid, we pay by the number of lights at an annual fee. Uh, they've calculated that yeah, in, right. right? So, I mean, what it looks like here is that we're, we're going from 60 watt bulbs to 50 watt for one line. high intensity, and we're it's costing cost. us over double. Double cost per yeah, It per doesn't year. make sense. Yeah. But, uh, but, but you're we need a better explanation, you know? So. I agree. I agree. Um, it would be in going through the list, um, some of the fixtures date to 19. Congratulations. Oh, yeah, that's, that's fine. And, you know, I could see them uh, charging us for a uh, fixture upgrade, but annually? <laughs> well, yes, but we, we've got 60 watt bulbs, right? And a watt is a watt, and we go to 50 watt bulbs. So we say, no, they, they're charging us a lot more, and it's because we're paying for the insulation. Granted, we are getting more light. Possibly, we are getting more light. Same deal with my car. I got high capacity discharge bulbs. I will buy. I think, I think we need some manager and ask him, him to uh, to commit to being with the board to discuss alternatives. Uh, that would be good. Thank you. You might want to. The planning commission too, because they might want to participate in the discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, copy CPC. Great. Great. If uh, I could just continue my report, two more things. Uh, one is uh, a recommendation from the Tax Insurance Advisory Committee. This is the uh, committee comprised of the Tax uh, Unionized 